Hi there. Um, my name is Art, and a while ago I built a, a small pictorial directory for a local church. And um, I built this in Cork Express 2018, and I chose that program because they wanted a piece of software that they own. They don't have to pay a subscription for it and for nonprofit organizations or institutions like churches, um, they get it at a pretty cheap price. And uh, with Cork Express, uh, if all they ever did was build uh, and change this directory, it's well worth the price. Uh, so the first thing I do is I build a folder that everything's gonna go into. And in this case, I've called it directory. And when you open that up, you'll see I have a folder for cover pictures. And we have uh, another folder called miscellaneous in which I put uh, logos, graphics to dress up the, uh, the document, and so on and so forth. And then I also have a folder where I have all the pictures of the people that's going to populate this particular document. So we're going to go to Cork Express. And we're going to open it up and we're going to go File, New, Project, or Command N. And uh, the, um, the dialog box that comes up will say Layout 1. We can leave that alone. We want Print Selected. and the default is uh, US letter, which is here, the size. And we want half of that. We want a document that's five and a half by eight and a half. And we want portrait. And we want automatic text box. And on the margin guides, we're going to use 0.625 or one eight, uh, five eighths of an inch for all the borders around the page. We need one column, and the gutter width for this uh, uh, document is uh, irrelevant, so we can just leave it alone and we'll say OK. And Quark has built, our, uh, built a, a nice little uh, page for us, and we'll Command-0 to center it, and Command-minus to make it a little bit smaller so we can see the whole page. Now the next thing we're going to do after this Oh, actually, before we do this, we have to make sure we have some windows, uh, uh, some directories open. And so we want a style sheets uh, directory and a colors, and we need to have our um, uh, tools palette. And down here, we need, i uh, select this so you can see it, we need to have this measurements palette. And you will find all those in window and you'll see colors it's selected measurements is selected style sheets is selected and tools is selected and so if one of these while you're building this disappears this is where you'll find all those um, so did that just disappear on me yeah tool so there we go and it goes back where it is. So the next thing we do is we're going to go to Page, Display. We're going to go to Master A. And just go my Command uh, Minus, make it a little bit smaller. So on this page, we have um, a text box that Quark has built for us. And before we can use this, we need to make some uh, changes to that box. So first thing we're going to do is while it's open, you're going to look down here, straight to, right below it, in the measurements palette, you see these uh, four little symbols. And the first one is top alignment. So that makes the type aligned to the top of the uh, uh, text box. This will make it aligned to the bottom of the text box, the center, or justify. And in our case, we want it to have bottom alignment. And then we're going to go and change that page to white, which is over here in your colors palette, which is white. 
Now we're going to choose Drop Shadow, which is in your Measurements palette, almost uh, just below your uh, page. We'll click that, and we're going to go Apply Drop Shadow. And it's too dark for my liking, so where it says 100%, we're just going to change that to 40. And we're going to say OK, or Enter. Now the other thing we need to do is have this text selected and we're going to go to paragraph and we're going to make sure that the text uh, down here is aligned to the right. Now if you look at your text uh, box you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner there's a little blink blinking cursor that shows that whatever we put in there will be aligned to the right and to the bottom and that's what we want. The next thing we have to do is, um, is change the size of this. Because we want it uh, one-fifth the size, a little bit smaller, um, so we can put five of these uh, five text boxes in a row. Um, and so to do that, we're going to go to the Home uh, button here. And you'll see there's uh, some numbers in these boxes. So the first two here, the X and Y, is how far away the top left hand corner is from uh, the text box is from the actual edge of the page then we have the width of this particular box and the height now these boxes are also a calculator so in here you can click in here after the 0.75 and we're going to put in a slash 5 which divides it by 5 and then we're going to make it a little bit smaller and we're going to put minus 0.125 and we'll go enter and you notice all of a sudden it's all uh, small or smaller. Now we're going to make sure this is selected and you're going to hold the shift option key down and with the mouse just drag that box down and then while this is still selected um, you're going to go command duplicate or command D and you're going to do that to and there we have five boxes and the bottom one you're going to use the down arrow key and just move it down a little bit not quite to the uh, 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 to the guides then we're going to select all these boxes here because we want to make the spacing in between even so we'll go to space align and we'll go to the very first uh, Building, and it says space top edges and it will space them evenly because it says that here or we can put a number in there but space evenly is good and I just click on the side so it's all deselected so um, another thing we would like to have on this page so everything that's on this page will appear on all your uh, pages that you build so on here we're going to build a little box on the top which will hold the name directory and we'll just type in there and of course you can have it say anything you want you can put dates in there uh, that sort of thing and we're going to go down into the measurements palette and we're going to go character, regular, bold, and we're going to change the size to 14 points. And um, we need to go to paragraph and we'll center that sideways. And that's good. Now this thing is still selected, so we're going to have the shift option key and we're going to drag it all the way down to the bottom right about here and it's made a copy of that and in here we're going to use the command uh, hold on the command button and the three and it puts in a symbol in there and this is a uh, uh, it makes automatic page numbers so as you create pages in this document it will number them one after the other. So one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Um, 
So the next thing we need to do is I'm just going to go up here and use the selection tool and click on here so nothing is selected. So we need to um, make sure that these five boxes are linked together so that if we put text in this top box and there's more text than the box can hold, it will flow into the next box and down and down and down until it runs out of space down here and it will make a new page with a text box and um, and yeah so to link these boxes we're going to go into the tools, tools palette up here in the top left and we're going to use a text link see, linking tool it looks like a little chain and we're going to click on that and we're going to click in this first box at the top and then we're going to click into the next box and you see it's built a little arrow goes from the bottom of this one to the top of the next one and we're just going to click in here click in here click in here then you're going to change this to selection tool and click on here so that nothing's selected so the next step now we're going to do is go page display and we're going to go to layout one and unfortunately this didn't change down here it should be page one so we're going to go back to page display master a Go to the text tool and we're going to scroll up a little bit. And we're going to just do it again, Command 3. And now we're going to go to Page, Display, Layout. And a second time around it works. Go figure. And so I'm going to go up here to this selection tool and deselect everything. So there we have a page that. Um, it's not quite complete. We have to add some things to it. So the interesting thing about Quark's text boxes is that they will hold more than just text. So inside these text boxes, you can put um, picture boxes, you can put text boxes, and Quark will treat them as text. So we will build, uh, use the, uh, uh, the rectangle box tool. And on top of one of these boxes, we're going to uh, just use it as a guide for size. So we're just going to draw a box like so. And this box will eventually hold all the, will hold pictures. And we go up to this uh, selection tool again, and we're going to hold the shift option key down. And we're going to drag this thing over a little bit like so. And I want both boxes to be the same height. And I'm going to drag uh, with no keyboard, keys selected. I'm just going to use the mouse and drag this over to there. And you'll notice now that everything that you see here, there's room at the top, there's room at the sides. And um, so we know that these will fit inside of one of these. And as they stand at the moment, um, they don't have any real relationship to anything. They just float around and, uh, and it doesn't do us much good for that. So I'm going to just select this box and we're going to go Command X and use the text tool and we're going to select the very first box at the top and you'll see that little cursor blinking down here and we're going to go Command V. And you'll see the cursors all of a sudden become really large because this it thinks that this is a really large piece of type. You use this select tool again and we'll click this box and we'll go Command X. We'll use the text tool and we'll insert it there and we'll go Command V and put a little space in there. And you can see that um, it also thinks that we've still put a large piece of type in there, even though it's not type. So we're going to take this selection tool again and select this first big box. And we're just going to drag it over just a little bit. I want about this much space in here. Because what's going to happen is sometime down the road you're going to have to go and get an insertion point in here. And if it actually touches this edge 
like it does over here, it becomes almost impossible to do that. So we need to have a little bit, little bit of space. So we're going to put a picture in here, and we're going to go Command E, and we'll take this picture and we'll go Open, and now we have a picture in there, which is pretty nice. Then we're going to go here and go Command E, and uh, inside the directory uh, miscellaneous, I have some untitled text, and we'll go OK. And it's put in all the text from that document. And we're going to go uh, Shift Command down, and we will delete all that ex excess type. So if we were to uh, uh, make this um, fill all these spots with this type, then you'd have to go through individually and format all these names. If you're happy the way it looks, we're good, but most people would like the name a little bit bolder, so we have to go down to character, and we're going to go bold, and we're going to make it a little bit larger, we're going to go 14 points. And then the phone number again, you want it to highlight it a bit. So we're going to go Helvetica uh, Bold Oblique. And we'll just go, I don't know, we can type in there 13. Now, if we had to do this with a couple of hundred uh, uh, entries, it would drive you crazy. So Quark has some. Uh, you can set up some of their style sheets, so this will do that automatically when you imp, uh, import the text. This will just happen, but it's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do today. So, um, but what we are going to do is uh, um, we're going to use style sheets to program this so that this is easy to do with just a couple keystrokes. You don't have to go down into your measurements palette, find a type, and do all this scrolling around and filing, uh, finding all this stuff. So the first thing we will do is we will select this uh, address. And we will go to this little, the bottom style sheet here, and you see the, the A. And we will click on that and create a new style sheet. And we will call that tech uh, uh, body. So basically body copy and we're going to add a shortcut for that and we're going to call that control one and we'll say okay then we're going to select uh, Martha uh, the name and again we'll go here a and we'll call this uh, name And we're going to add a shortcut, and that will be Control 2. And we'll say OK. And then we'll take the phone number, and we'll go back to the A, and we'll call this phone. And we'll add a shortcut, and the shortcut will be Control 3. And we will say OK. So now I'm going to come change all these things to uh, body. So uh, now we can actually go through and populate this. So how this works is um, uh, you, you're going to import your text. So let's say, let's go do this. So populate. So we're going to take the text tool here. And we're going to select out here and drag across. So we're going to go Command C. And when I go paste, it's going to see if you see the blinking cursor here, it wants to uh, paste it into this spot, but there's no room. So when you go Command V or paste, it forces it into the next box and the next box and the next box and the next box. Okay, and you can do that forever. So uh, the next thing that we do is we're going to put a picture in. We already have a picture in for this, 
and we want to format this type once you put it in. So here we're going to highlight it and we're going to go control 2 and control 3. Control 2, Control 3. I don't have to keep on going down here and changing the character and paragraph and all that sort of stuff. I just have to go in here, Control 1, or Control 2, and 3. And you're thinking like, oh, okay, why do I, I'm still going through all this effort? So supposing you do this and you decide that sometime later you want all the um, all the phone numbers in red and so to go through the whole document and change change them to the red to change them to red is a lot of work or you decide that oh I've I've got a nicer looking font that I want to change it to so what you're going to do is um, I'll go up here and let's say the phone number um, you'll see it here and you're gonna um, right click on that and we're going to edit phone number and so in the phone number you'll see that it is Helvetica it's bold it's 13 point it's black um, so we can change this to a different color if you like we can change it to magenta and instead of Helvetica um, we can change it to um, I'll find something uh, just picking a, a font and we'll go bold and we'll say okay and you see all the phone numbers have changed that we've applied um, uh, this um, style sheets to the ones we haven't done any style sheets to they don't change but if you watch down here, we changed the style sheet, so we're going to go here and we're going to go Command 2 and Command 3, and the text changes to <coughs> the color that we wanted, and so on as, as we go along. So it's uh, pretty powerful that way and you can go through your document uh, quite quickly um, and we of course we can go add some more people here command e so to get these uh, to get this text in here to get the red text we're just going to make this a little bit smaller so i can yeah i'm on We're going to go in here, untitled text, and drag everything over here. So from another document, it could be a Word document, an Excel document, um, something like that. Um, you can just cut and paste from here into here. Um, and again, it works. Uh, quite quickly um, but what happens now is this this here is uh, bold if we take this command C and we paste it in here it's going to take up the characteristics of the very first line so you're going to select all and you're going to go control 1 and brings it back to this and then control 2 and Oops. Control 3. And there you have your formatting. And uh, it's a pretty, it's, it's easy to do. Okay. So um, we're all down to page 2. Select this, Command C, 
I'm just going to put something in there. Mix page three. I want to go in here. And we're just going to make four pages. We don't have to make uh, a gazillion pages. So, um, so what happens? Let's say this uh, person right here um, no longer belongs to the organization or the church. So we're going to click out here. And we're going to delete this person. And everything scrolls back up. If somebody comes back in, you're going to just copy and paste anybody, Command C, and put them where they need to go, Command V, and everything scrolls down, and then you change the information and the picture for that person. And uh, it, it makes it uh, really quick and easy to make changes to these documents once you spent the time to make it correct the first time. So um, we're almost done. We're not quite there yet. And I'm going to save it because we haven't saved it yet. Then I'm just going to call it directory. And we'll say save. And we're going to replace what's there. OK, so um, the, we're going to make this a self cover. So when this goes through the photocopier um, or goes through a print shop, the cover is actually the same stock as the paper that the inside is. And it'll all be produced at the same time. So we need to add a couple of pages to page uh, in front of page one. So we need to add a page for the cover and the inside cover. And to do this, um, we're going to go have this at page one. And we're going to go up here towards this page. And we're going to insert. And we're going to insert two pages. And we're going to insert, insert those two pages before page one. And we will say OK. Oops. I'm going to go back. Uh, we're going to delete this page and we're going to go page, delete this page, and we're going to say OK. We're going to do that all over again. So we're going to go to page, insert, and we're going to insert two pages, and before page one, and instead of master A, because we don't need all this information that's on here, we're going to choose a blank single. And we'll say OK. And now we have our two pages that are blank. And then it starts with page 3. And we don't want it to start on page 3. We want it to start on page 1. But Quark Express thinks it has two pages in front of it. So we want it to automatically renumber all these pages. So again, we're going to go to page. We're going to go to section. and start section and we'll go okay and you see the page number three has changed to a page one which is what we want and then on the very first page we're going to draw a box and for the cover i built a cover already in photoshop and i made it so it fits the whole page it's got the margins already built in that i need for printing and we'll go command e and we'll go to directory, cover pictures, and we'll go open, and we'll use picture number one, and we'll go OK. And there we have a picture. And if you need to put text on top of that, you would just, uh, you can draw a text box. And in here, you can put uh, date, uh, addresses, whatever you want. And you can add text boxes anywhere you want. You change the font, uh, whatever. And they'll just print right on top. They'll print black, which is actually quite nice. So I'm going to delete that because I don't even particularly want that. So Command-K will delete that little box. Now we have to go to the very back of the document. 
and right now it ends at page four and is that what we want yeah four pages plus the cover six so now we have a back cover and an inside back cover so again we go up to here to page um, insert and we're going to add two pages at end of layout and we still want a blank single and we'll say okay and then we'll go down scroll to the very last page here and um, we're going to do a little a box we'll command e into directory miscellaneous and we'll just grab this flourish eps and it puts a little flourish in there and if you hold shift option command and the f key it fills the box sideways and I'm just going to drag the whole thing down a little bit and so now we have a finished a document however it's still not a booklet so we're going to save it and our next course of action is we will file file export as PDF and it brings up a little menu here and you may have to make sure you go down to options which is here and you're going to click on options and you have to check off this include blank pages otherwise the PDF you build uh, will not hold uh, will not build the uh, inside front cover and inside back cover you'll just leave them out because they're blank and so we'll say okay and we'll go save uh, we want to go into directory and we will save and we will replace what's there and we don't need this open anymore and we'll just save it just because now if we go into directory here and we have our directory PDF our reader come on There we go and there we have our directory and when we print it there's the cover there's the pictures inside the pages um, like that so when we go print you can use the print thing up in the top left hand corner or you can go command print and you're going to check down in here you to choose actual size and you'll choose booklet and you'll see now you have the front page, the back page, and you will have the inside pages in the correct order that it needs to be. And if your printer will print, um, will duplex when it prints, you're done. If not, you have to print all the odd pages first and then put them back in all the odd pages to the machine and print all the even pages. And um, now we are done. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. And we're going to cancel this. Close that.